Um, good evening. My name is Keith Romano. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is the Inland Wetlands Commission meeting for the town of Monroe. It is March 8th, 2023, and the time is 7.18 p.m. I'd like to take a... Uh, let's do first do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Take a roll call of the members of the commission and staff present during tonight's hybrid meeting. Whose answer here are present, starting myself, uh, Keith Romano, um, uh, Vice Chair Eric Lindstrom. Here. Uh, Secretary B.J. Hall. Here. Um, Jim Stewart, who's a licensed engineer and surveyor in the state of Connecticut. Here. Late, but here, here. We waited for you. Um, not present tonight is Clark Ingris, Ross Masteracco, and Ryan Kelly. Um, we have uh, Rick Schultz, who's our town planner. Present. Uh, Cheryl Valerie, who's our wetlands agent. Present. And Sarah Stroud, recording secretary. Here. All right, before I start, I read our mission statement. Mr. House. Chairman Joe uh, Canis, Canis from uh, the consulting engineer. Uh, and then we have Joe Canis, a consulting engineer from yeah, he, our town. He's for the town engineer. Our town. Our oh, town. I didn't know that. Sorry. Okay. So we have uh, Joe Canis, who's our town consultant engineer. All right. Before we start, I'll read our mission statement and how the meeting will proceed. Inland Wetlands Mission Statement. The objective and purpose of the Inland Wetlands Commission is to provide for the overall protection pre and preservation of the Inland Wetlands watercourses within the town of Monroe. Being procedure, please note that this meeting is being conducted utilizing electronic equipment in compliance with state law public act 21-1. As such, this meeting is being recorded and will be available to the public in compliance with state law. If you are attending remotely, please remember to mute your microphone unless speaking. Uh, anyone participating remotely should state their name and title if actual at the outset of each occasion that such person is speaking. All votes taken during which any member of this body are participating remotely shall be taken by roll call unless the vote is unanimous. The chat features will not be utilized nor considered during this meeting. In the normal course of our meetings, we will hear public hearings and other applications. The protocol for public hearings is to have an applicant make a, pre a presentation to the commission during which and after which the commission will be asking the applicant questions. I'd like to ask that the applicants to keep their presentation as concise as possible. The commission will then review town staff and other independent comments. The meeting will then be open for public comment. I will ask that all comments be made to the chair or commission. After any and all comments pro in opposition or of a general nature are made, the applicant will be given an opportunity to respond. Please keep comments or questions direct and a time limit of three minutes may be imposed. It's not necessary that the applicant respond, but generally in their best interest to do so. There will be no further opportunity for new questions unless new materials entered in as evidence or testimony during their response. Please keep all comments pro and con specific to the inland wetlands related matters. <coughs> Other applications that do not involve a public hearing will follow a similar format with the exception that there will be no public comments allowed. The meeting followers are published agenda unless otherwise amended. Are there any changes to the agenda? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have two on release request one for two high ridge drive and 12 glen hollow drive and a uh, motion is in order to uh, add that to the agenda second want to make a motion motion to add second mo motion to add from uh, commissioner uh, lindstrom and a second by commissioner stewart all fair okay. all right. All right. motion is uh, approved Added to the agenda. Okay. Um, this part of the, uh, the this public hearing is general public participation. If there's anybody in the uh, here in the chambers tonight or online that would like to speak to <coughs> on a general nature uh, on anything related to wetlands, provided that there's this topic would not be in front of us or for in the near future, which I don't think there's anybody. Okay. 
um, then right along to got IWC 20, 22 16 417 Main Street, which has been stable. Now we have, you have a letter, Mr. Chairman, to be accepted. We need a motion and a second. 35 day, 35 day request for extension. Oh. Go ahead. Please read it. Well, I'll just make reference to it. So we have a letter today from uh, Edward and Associates um, for a time extension. Um, on uh, IWC 2022-16-417 Main Street. We just need a motion to accept it and the second. Accept the letter. Motion to accept the motion election. to accept by uh, Commissioner Lindstrom and second. Second. Second by Commissioner Hall. All there. Aye. 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 Now for the next one. Excuse me, myself. I guess so. And Mr. Chairman, I have one new exhibit for the record I'd like to read. And you just want to state for the record that uh, Chairman uh, Keith Romano has recused himself. Yeah, so Chairman Keith Romano has recused himself. So that's uh, exhibit number seven, response to comments from Soli Engineering dated March 1st. That is all, Mr. Chairman. We have somebody here representing for uh, 127 Main Street, IWC 2023-2. Yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, town staff. For the record, my name is Robert Pryor, professional engineer and land surveyor with Solar Engineering. Here in the road Connecticut, I can represent the applicant on uh, the town view application. Uh, from my understanding, this application was heard of uh, February 8th meeting. I was unable to attend at that meeting, so I, I apologize for that. Um, first, I have some a little bit of administrative things. There were some uh, last at our last appearance before the Planning and Zoning Commission. There were some comments made uh, by neighbors that we addressed um, in the time that between that meeting and this meeting. I'd like to read those revised plan sheets to you. Um, I'll we'll talk about what those changes were. They were very minor, but we will distribute that information to you now. May I know? Thank you. When you get set, if you could allow me to share my screen. Sure. That's share, and then hit this. Cheers, Steps, boom, boom, boom. So we're going to try to keep our presentation relatively short this evening to address, uh, basically address some of the outstanding issues, questions that uh, raised since we were here in February. Uh, we're going to do the, um, we're going to have this short introduction. Um, as we talked about, we're going to review some of the site plan revisions. Uh, we'll go over the uh, changes to landscaping. Um, and the wetland buffer revisions that were made since the last uh, some drawings that you saw. Uh, there, I think, I believe there were some questions regarding lighting. Um, we're going to go through a discussion of alternatives. Uh, we're going to do, uh, some different alternatives on the, uh, the project as, as, uh, as we know, uh, laid out. 
And then uh, we'll wrap up with a discussion about the wetland conditions and uh, effect of, of the existing wetlands of the proposed project. Um, with me tonight are um, Chris Bolowski from Soli Engineering to answer any specific technical questions you might have. Uh, Mary Blackburn, our landscape architect, she'll be doing the uh, discussion about the plantings and lighting. Um, and then as far as the discussion about the existing wetland conditions uh, and, and possible effects of the project, uh, we have uh, Bill Kenny from William Kenny Associates, our wetland scientist. Once we get done with that, um, you know, the, we, can either, we can either answer questions, go to, the, go to any uh, public comment at that point, and then, you know, obviously we'll come back and uh, close out uh, once we can answer all the questions and address any actual uh, comments from the public. That'll be pretty much up it for us tonight. So the um, site plan is, is, like I said, there's some minor changes to the site plan. I'll go over in detail. The most current change to the site plan I'm talk about that was relative to comments that came from the, our planning, our, our, our first planning and zoning our public hearing were really Really, some additional screening uh, along uh, the property line, screen uh, some of the uh, neighbors, or the residential neighbors um, along uh, was it Fox Fox Run, yeah, Little Fox Lane, and then we also added, which you won't be able to, you won't really be able to see on the rendering, but we. We did add a screen fence, um, some additional a screen fence along this property line, as well as some additional screen plantings uh, for to address uh, some visual concerns uh, from the neighbor on 57 uh, Crescent Lane. So Crescent Place, I should say. So um, none of those changes really are are applicable to the. Uh, the, are, are within the regulated or regulated area or the uh, upland review area, uh, but I just bring it to your attention because that's what's reflected on the plans that we just handed out. Uh, the other changes that we'll be talking about is obviously some, some changes to the buffer plantings or addition of buffer plantings uh, within the regulated area that Mary will cover next. <coughs> and there were some other there were some there was a there was some other minor um, adjustments made to our engineering plans that were relative to comments that we received from the engineering department uh, from uh, your, your engineering consultant um, they did not material materially alter the site plan uh, so there's not we're we're going to let uh, we'll obviously let your consultant uh, talk about any any our responses to those we're not going to go through each of those responses again that didn't materially affect the, uh, the site plan um, I think with that, I'm going to have uh, Mary Blackburn talk about go into a little more detail about the planting changes that we've made, uh, as well as address the, uh, some of the comments that staff had in regards to the lighting. Good evening. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Blackburn. I'm a professional architect in the state of Connecticut with Soli Engineering offices here at Main Street in Monroe. Uh, as Rob said, I will walk you through some of the um, landscape and lighting changes that we made in response to comments uh, received at the previous hearing. This was the revised um, landscaping plan. Uh, some of the changes we made were we swapped um, some species so that all of the species within the upland review area are now 100% native. And on the overall site, we have 72% uh, native plants proposed. <laughs> Previously, uh, we just had a seed mix in the upland area here. We've since um, added 200 um, trees and shrubs on the this they said and, and added, um, we did have this row of trees in the front. We've added 
kind of a second row of trees and shrubs behind that. We've also added a note to the plan about the procedures for removing invasive species um, to be in conformance with the Connecticut Invasive Plant Working Group um, recommendations. And we've actually revised the seed mix on this slope here to include um, native wildflower mix, just to kind of dress it up because you can see that um, slope from the row. It's pretty um, visual there. So we mix that in with the um, erosion control mix that we previously specified. And again, all the seed mixes are native no mo mixes. So this area up until about here where it transitions to lawn um, would be left to naturalize. And same here up until this area uh, would be that wildflower and erosion control mix left to naturalize to a meadow. I think that um, because actually we did add uh, additional plantings within some of the um, islands, um, but that's, you know, outside of the Upland Review area. And as Rob said, we added uh, some evergreen screening in the southwest corner to kind of help with the screening of that neighbor. On the lighting plan, so we submitted a photometric plan with the last um, two weeks ago, and all the lights are LED, and they're all international dark sky compliant. It's uh, consisting of 10 to 12 foot, a mix of 10 and 12 foot light poles. And we've limited um, the foot candles to zero at the wetlands with the exception of just about 200 square feet and highlighted it here along the entry drive. Uh, so in this area, we, we did use pollution <coughs> fixtures, but it's quite close to the entry drive. So right, we're at point one foot candles in the, the highlighted yellow area. But that shouldn't have an impact uh, to the wetlands. Uh, there is a you know drive through. Dunkin' Donuts drive through is here. They have some site lighting on this side of the drive. Um, and in addition to the development on Main Street, it's not a dark area. Existing. That covers it for both the lighting and landscape. Um, I might have missed it, but um, do you know where the invasive species are um, that are going to be removed? Are they in the wetland? Or are they close by it in the buffer? Or so um, <coughs> they are close to the buffer. Most of the site is going to be graded. Um, you can see a limit of disturbance. So much of that will be the existing vegetation will be removed, and then our proposed seed mixes will be installed. So it will be removed. To the wetland, but we wouldn't go in the wetland um, for any direct disturbance. So there might be invasives in the wetland. There may be. How about pesticide treatment or fertilizers on the mowed area that goes downgrade into the seed mix area on the two grassed areas, upper upper levels? Are there going to be any fertilizers or pesticide treatments on those so they would grassed be areas? Known, um, I would have to check with the um, maintenance company. I guess that would be yeah. part of. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Um, in the area of the wetlands that's uh, impacted by the light, um, could there be uh, any evergreen um, plants installed along the, along the uh, roadway that block that light? It is very close, and there's a sidewalk, um, and if it leads down to 25, right on the back side of where the lights mm -hmm. 
pepper posts, so they're very, um, there's like no space. There's no space there? Yeah. Okay. Is and that's a retaining a wall? wall yeah. That's a retaining wall there? How, how tall is the retaining wall? Mm -hmm. Five to six feet. Five to six feet. It drops down, and then there's a pipe down that right there uh, as well. Again, it is point one foot handles there. Everything. So in your in our last meeting, we had some discussion over why they needed to be non-native plants up around the buildings. Yeah. You could enlighten us on that. Yeah, um, you know, natives are, are good, but just because some natives are good doesn't mean one hundred percent natives are are better. And um, I'm not saying natives are bad, but. Uh, I don't want to just well, that. And we, we plant natives whenever possible, but they tend to be um, leggy and large and, um, you know, some are not suited for a more communicated look that you're looking for around residential houses or within parking areas. You get the heat island effect, um, you know, you have smaller islands and um, not all natives are really suited for the conditions of a parking area. Okay. Is it primarily in the parking areas? Yes, and then around some of the buildings. And we've used cultivars, um, which are kind of cultivated varieties. So they may not be a straight native, uh, but they're bred to be either smaller or have you know, more desirable traits that people are looking for. Okay. You said overall you're at 72% native for? Yes, for we did swap out, yeah, quite a few plants. Okay. To <clears throat> and that would be the ones you're talking about, um, would be the ones we see right up, sort of winding between the buildings? Yes. And maybe you could just tell us what, what they are dominantly, so we don't have to Look. Yeah, so it, it's actually probably um, easier just to tell you which aren't native because there aren't as many. Um, that's what you're looking for. So all of the trees are native with the exception of um, some London plane trees. There's 10 of those. And then um, Japanese stewardia, there's three of those. And a Armstrong maple, which is actually a cross. It's a hybrid between a native and a non-native, uh, there are 72 of those. And that's predominantly in this um, LA area that you see, because you get a nice kind of base shape for And are they hardier than the alternative? So is that the? They can be, yes. Like in general, um, like a dogwood, they can get um, you know, hardy mildew, Diseases, fresh Rutgers University has come out with a hybrid of the native dogwood and the non native, which is much more resistant to some of those diseases. And they're, so they're longer. Like, or like, you can see what's made with the elm trees and um, we don't have elms anymore because it's the Dutch elm disease. Right. Now there's hybrids. Um, that are much more resistant to Dutch elm. So. Okay. A question: Can you just give a little bit of? Oh, I see you've got some areas marked with the it's synthetic grass yeah. on the other page. There's a maybe a practice putting green or something. Just yes. and then there's another one in the upper uh, area or synthetic grass. Yeah, so this, I believe, is a dog um, park, and then this one, as you said, is a putting green. Which is for maintenance, um, and actually for cleanup. Those are typically done in synthetic. That, that's the dog park up at the top. That would be the oval, right? Yes, that's dog park. How big is that? I don't have the number. This one doesn't look too big. Yeah. I can see why you need that set synthetic grass there. Yeah, it's clean up the fence just to. Are you putting in the wet and regulate, regulated area signs? 
Is that part of your application? Yes. Uh, so I believe that's required. I believe that's a requirement, correct? Right, I just didn't see them on the plans. Um, and I was wondering where particularly they were going to go. If they were going to go with the no mow area, or because if you know, they're too far down, people would be able to see it. So would they go along the no yeah. mow area, kind of like here? You can either put them along the no mow area or, um, you know, on, well, these trees won't be large enough, but. I, I mean, um, I would say no mow, but that's, yeah. you know, it's something to the commission, but I'd be eliminate it higher up so people really see them. If they're just much lower, they're, they're this big, they're not going to see and them. And this right basin far. here is fenced off, so maybe it's something we can mount to the fencing uh, as well, just to eliminate a bunch of posts. Sure. Could, you, could you point to that again, where it was fenced off? Uh, so this basin okay. is fenced. Hard to see. Here. What? There's a fence uh, between the basin and the landscaping plants? Or is it all around, or is it just where the, the paving is? Just on the paving side. From people. People falling or getting into there. Larger basins. I think if the signage went at the no mow area, just in case if someone was mowing, they wouldn't accidentally, you know, mow. We have standards in our regulations for what the signage should be in those situations. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's a sign. We purchased it from the town. Mm -hmm. That can be, can be added in. So you'll add those into the plans? For sure. Great. Awesome. Wait, do we have a site walk plan for this? No, it uh, wasn't requested or discussed. Okay. I, it, it's very I, the challenge I'm having is understanding the slope. I mean, why you would fence? I, I know there's some drop off there, but I can't picture it, and my eyes aren't good enough to look at the. Uh, I think one of the gratings without all the hatching. There we go. Okay. It might be enough. Big yeah, because yeah. the old ones all looking for one Yeah, I just like, I just can't. And then um, we just have to see. Thank you. Or if you hit escape, So yeah, you, you can kind of see where the how the basin from the where the sidewalk is drops off into the basin. So mm -hmm. that's why at the back of that sidewalk we're proposing a fence because obviously you have the combination of people walking and a sort of steep slope into the basin. So that's that's really where the fence would be. And then it's back up the other side. And then it comes back up to sort of the, the to where the, you have the lower edge of the basement basin. Um, and, you know, you're not looking at pedestrian traffic along that edge. So you're not looking at, yeah. uh, you know, I think as far as the demarcation goes, you know, I think we'd be happy with a, I, I think it, it's, I think we'd be happy, we'd be, we'd, it probably makes more sense, at least in our, to stipulate that. We'll work out where the locations will go with staff. Mm -hmm. You want to specify X number of markers, that's fine, or whatever you want. But we'll, I, 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 think, I think it may make a lot of sense to walk that, to walk, before the markers are put in, mm -hmm. to walk that site and locate those where those, where those go to, so that they're visual, so that they, they have the most, the most effective. You know, I, sometimes, like you say, you look at a plan, it's tough to tell whether or not where they're where they're going to be most visible and where they're going to be you know in the right place. So I I, I would I would just suggest that that might be a way to handle the location of them. Yeah, and I think have staff help. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I would like to do a site walk just to get my bearings on that. It, it would make sense. Most of it's graded already, right? Is that no. no, no. So, so you know, the grading that's been done out there, the rating has really been the, the mass grading to establish where the buildings are going to go. Sort of that base rough mm -hmm. grading for that. 
Um, none of this addition, none of this more sort of site development grading has really been done. Okay. So you you won't you won't see that you won't see that slope if you go out there. Um, you know, obviously you, you know you can see what the site looks like uh, with a site walk, but you know as far as and you'll understand sort of if you haven't been out there, obviously you'll, you'll gain an understanding for the amount of work that's been done to get us to this point, mm -hmm. uh, which you know is clearly significant. Okay, then I had to scratch that site walk request. Unless you wanted to do it further on, but yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't hinge our uh, no I don't decision think. on that, right? Especially if we if we're a little concerned with just some of the signage. I, I think having mm -hmm. staff locate it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, when I, I, it's, I, it's time. Yeah, take a look at the aerial photo too. Zoom it's zoom pretty back. evident, kind of okay, what's see. going on out there. Let's see if we can get to that. <laughs> So yeah, I mean here's I mean this is an, this is it's not it's not current, but this gives you a good idea of um, you know the the level of disturbance that's out there now and kind of what you would see and you would you would you would clearly see the um, the rock face you know along this these two sides of the property where that's all been cut out um, you know the blue lines indicate where the uh, approximate edge of wetlands are, delineated wetlands are. Yeah. Here, so that basin would be. Yeah, basically there's a driveway where the basin's going, where it's gonna go. There's a bit, there's yeah. the, the, the site drive that they've been using to process, to move the material in and out of the site is, you know, is where the basin's going to go. And, you know, certainly at the commission wants the site go yeah. I'm not sure I'm not sure you'd get much out of it. Okay. I can see that now. Okay. Well, appreciate that. I have no further questions. Good. Questions? I, I was just gonna say is Bill gonna give a little I'm gonna talk a little bit about the alternatives. I, oh yeah, I yeah. Talk right. a little bit about it and and, okay. and we're I'm not gonna I, I struggled a little bit with it to be honest with you. <laughs> so um not 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 because I haven't done alternative analysis before, but but typically what we're doing is, uh, you know, typically what we're doing, let me get back to- Not a lot of options on this site, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, typically we're looking at, and, and I'll start to talk about that first. But, so the project only has a small amount of direct impact on the site, and that's, um, let me get back to the rendering. If you, and if you look at, uh, let's see if I can get back to, If you look back to your, <laughs> so if you look at sheet, I want to say it's 2.13, you'll see we call out down here near Route 25, we call out a small um, area of direct weapon impact, let's say 250 square feet. Now that's associated with the construction, proposed construction of a sidewalk along Route 25, extension of an existing 30-inch um, RCP culvert that now that conveys flows from that wetland across Route 25 uh, currently. Um, so, you know the the sidewalk, the sidewalk, the proposed sidewalks that that's a re, that was requested by planning and zoning. Um, to have that sidewalk along Route 25. Um, so I'll say I'll I'll say what I found relative to that. So the, your plan of conservation and development talks about pedestrian connectivity along Route 25. I don't know that I, I was unable to find anything directly cut where that's codified in your zoning regulations. The, the special exception permit process talks about sidewalks. Um, but talks more about sidewalks connecting, you know, projects like this, residential projects in, in this zone um, to community facilities, things like that. We don't really have that. There's no, there's no bus stop 
here on Route 25, anywhere close to the site, basically there's no plans based on our discussions with the Bridgeport Transit District. There's no there's no plans to extend the bus line up this far. Mm. Uh, right now, the bus line kind of loops down near where the Amazon um, distribution center is. Then it goes up to Stop and Shop. Kind of that's that's about as high up as it gets, far north as it gets. Um, but like I said, the plan of conservation and development obviously does contemplate um, pedestrian connectivity. Uh, you know, we look of, of you know to us a feasible, feasible and prudent alternative to the filling is not to build a sidewalk. I don't want to say that we shouldn't build a sidewalk. Planning and zoning has requested it. I, you know, I. <laughs> that's where that's where we stand with regard to that direct impact. Uh, later on, um, Bill Kenny will probably talk about um, what effect that small impact has on that wetland. He can he can he can expand on that a little bit more uh, for the record. And I believe he'll also expand a little bit on the invasive stuff for you. So when we go to, so I think what's important to, um, when we talk about alternatives on this site, we, and, and Chris, I know went through a bunch of stuff and I've, I've got them in the slide deck here. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on them, but I'll, I'll talk about them. What's, what's important to understand about alternatives on this site is that because we are on um, on-site sewage disposal, we're very limited as to where we can put those systems. Um, on the site. Because of the work that's been done to develop the site, to make the site developable, essentially all the site where the rock removal has been done, there's, it's no longer available for septic because there's no naturally occurring soil there. So you, you basically take away all those areas. Um, and what you're left with, unfortunately, is the areas that are the closest to the, that are within the wetland, uh, the upland review area. Um, of the wetlands on the site. Uh, those areas were, while not undisturbed, at least they were relatively undisturbed and still retain natural soils that are suitable for the installation of on-site sewage disposal. So there's no, and, and I'll show you some some plans that show some, some you know, some kind of where, some other things that we've looked at during this process, but there's nothing that's ever gonna change that fact. So no matter how you rearrange sort of the deck chairs within the development area of the site, you're still stuck with this, this development of septic systems in the upland review area because that's where the suitable soils are. Town has, if the town had sewers, <coughs> we wouldn't be talking about any of it. <laughs> um, so uh, let me try and get back. So this first one, you've seen this. This was a long time ago. This site was proposed as a commercial development. We looked at this. We also had development, much development in the based on the parking requirements, the septic requirements, the stormwater requirements. We still had a significant activity in the upland review area. The problem with this site is none, no commercial tenants want to come to it, want to want to come to it. They, we've, we've looked at this site over the years for different commercial tenants because it's so far off the, kind of so far away from the road with the long driveway, really not a lot of interest. Um, it's, not a viable, it's not a viable thing to go forward with. Like I said, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Um, this plan was our first cut at the, um, at the residential sort of layout. This was what the plan that was originally um, approved in or was presented for the SDD approval. Um, it actually had one additional building, uh, but, a, but a fewer units because the buildings were a little bit smaller. And uh, again, you know, there's nothing about this that changes that underlying fact that you have to put the septics sort of in the upland review area. There's, the, the, the constraints are, are the same for all of um, the things that I'm going to show you. Um, and the reason that we changed from this to the plan we have now is that actually uh, during the, the initial PNC process, um, it, some of the commission members, I think, thought that these buildings should have elevators 
And so what ended up happening is the, the developer agreed that he would put elevators in the building, in the buildings, um, but that necess necessitated a different building footprint. And so we got building footprints, one less building and a few more units. I think we got eight more units, something like that. To, um, but, you know, the, the development footprint itself is, is, is obviously, you know, we're, we're, it's a pretty compact development footprint and it's, it is what it is because we're, you know, we have, uh, you know, to make the property work, it has to have so many units. When you have so many units, you have to have so much parking. You know, the developer develops a rather robust set of amenities on the site with the pool and the clubhouse and those things. And, you know, to support that um, requires a certain number of units. And again, it's, that has nothing to do with the fact that we're in the upland review area. What, have, what that has to do with is if we were talking about could we do could we do could we do less buildings or less units, it's it becomes non financially viable to do this project if we do that. Um, like I said, just because of there's a certain amount of fixed costs associated with with the ready with making the site ready, um, and it's. Uh, and obviously it was an expensive site to get ready because of all the rock that had to be removed. So um, you got a slide that shows us where that, where the septic is. I do, I do. I do. I'll, 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 get, I'll scroll through and no, show you where that is. No problem. Um, so, you know, we looked at, we looked at, so, well, what, what, you know, here's a slide that basically is the same development, but it slides the rock cut back closer to the property line, right? It's trying to slide up further away from the wetlands. Number one, we really can't do it based on zoning because we 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 need a wall and a fence on top of the on top of the wall. We would be in the setback then. It's non it becomes non zoning compliant. It's prohibitively expensive. It would mean another twenty five feet of rock cut closer to the neighbor's properties. I, I, we don't we don't see it as prudent nor financially feasible to do. Uh, but it is all. But it is something that we did. You know, we looked at. Um, and again, I'll get you. Yeah, we'll get down to the. We'll get you to the septic plan. So this is this is the plan that shows where the septic areas are. And again, you know the the we have so we're, we have you know so we have eight buildings, eight. Um, I'm sorry, seven eight residential. Well, let's take, take that back. Seven residential buildings and the clubhouse. So we have seven separate septic systems plus a smaller system for the clubhouse. Um, we're showing both the primaries and reserves here. So the we've taken we've so the the ones in the dashed lines are the primaries that will actually get built as part of the um, as part of the initial development. Uh, the reserve areas are the reserve areas are required by the state health code to show that we have an area to, to reconstruct um, the uh, septic system should there ever be a failure. What I will tell you is that we're very confident we're never going to use those. The the soils on this site are, are very granular soils, very good soils for septic. Um, for what's in the areas that we're proposing, the uh, septic areas. And typically, the reality of this is that, um, and Jim, you, you, you understand this, that as soon as the site gets occupied, the reserve areas kind of go away with regard to the health code because they you're allowed to reconstruct your, if you, have to re, if you have to repair a septic system, you're allowed to reconstruct it in the same place the existing one is. And that's sort of what you would do. That's typically what you would do because that's, it's just all, everything's there already. You know, so the, what you would end up doing is, you know, if you had to do a repair, you would basically build it in the same place. So, you know, we've tried to keep the, obviously we've kept the primaries on the uphill sides as far, to the, to far as far away from the, as far out of the, um, the regulated areas we can, um, but again, it, it you know there there's really you know this you know you might say well you know why aren't we investigating septic area here? And again, that's that's relative to the soil to the earthwork that's been done on the site already. Is that it's just not suitable? We've we've looked at it. We've seen you know there's been some ex extensive amount of earth removal in that area. And it's just not suit. It's just not suitable based on the health code um, 
put suffix there. I think, unless you have questions, I, I, I don't know if I got there with that with for you, but you did great. <laughs> but I, I, I just try. I'm just, I, I just, I, I like you know. Usually, usually when we look at we're looking at alternatives to impact. So it's sometimes it's tougher to come up with alternatives for sort of just activity. But I, hopefully, I went through and I kind of explained to you how we got where we got where we are. That's all. Um, with that, I, I, if you if you don't have any specific questions for me, I'd like to bring Bill Kinney up yeah. to, to go through his. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I do want to make a comment, and before you go, Rob, yep. the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission requested uh, the applicant to provide and show uh, additional parking spaces if it should arise. And Rob, can you just show the weather? Sure. Because that would require the applicant to come back. This developer is showing uh, a little over two spaces per dwelling unit. Just to give you an idea, uh, in Shelton, it was like 1.8. And it's kind of counterintuitive because there's usually two cars per unit, right? But they, the formula that they use, and uh, many towns accept the under two units per dwelling unit, but they are providing the two. Right. In the event that there's a need for additional, and as I told many of you, this project is showing four detached garages as an added uh, feature. Trumbull Shelton does not have that. In addition to the two plus parking yes. spaces? Well, it's part of, no, it's part of the overall oh. calculation. Okay. It's a feature that the uh, tenants will have to uh, pay for. And you should also be aware, and this was uh, noted at the planning and zoning hearing, each tenant, as part of the lease, gets one space. You want a second space, it's extra. Gotcha. So what I think what Rick was referring to is we've got a, a deferred parking area delineated and it's very difficult to see here, but you can see the outline of it sort of in here. Is um, that the dog park up at the top? There's the dog park. Sort of wrapping around the dog. down in okay. the dog park. And we've, we've located the actual parking area outside of the wetland review area. Um, I think we've got 56 additional spaces. 53 additional spaces. Is that paved or dirt? Um, it, it would be paved if we, we're, we're not building it. Okay. We're not going to build it at this time, but Rick was saying that if the need arose, in the, in the found that there was some that there was an issue with, for some reason, everyone wanted three cars. Yeah, exactly. We have those. We have some spaces um, available to do that. So I, we could build them, and we, if we had to come back to the commission to get that approved. How many bedrooms these places? Mostly one. I think they're one and two. To ones and twos. I, I don't know if there's. I don't know if there's seventeen. No, no three. The commission has a policy, no three. Yeah, yeah so I don't think there's any three beds. They're all two. You know, quite a few will be single person in there. Yeah, yeah. For the most, I, I would say it's heavily weighted to the ones, you know, it's all ones and twos, but it's more, it's heavily weighted to the, there's, there's studios and So that parking's on top of the septics, I assume. Yes. So it's, uh, you know, it's a. Right, and that's wor worthy of noting that it will be constructed to accommodate the uh, weight of the cars. Yeah. Right. The, right. The septics we're providing are all going to be suitable to be located on their pavement. That we're, uh, we are doing that. Just to clarify, Chris Plossie, for the record, there are no studios. It's 60% two bedrooms and 40% one bedrooms. Each building has 45 total bedrooms. If you will. Thank you. And it's four floors? Three floors. Three floors. Three floors. Three floors, uh, three floors within, again, each building does have an elevator. Yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> Pretty nice, right? Uh, yeah. Although my daughter lives down in New York City on a, a four story walk, walk up, and I can tell you, that's, that, that's, a rough, that's a rough thing every day. So, if you want to attract empty nesters, you better get <laughs> I, mean, I would suggest that's true. I would agree. Um, I think. Well, I think we'll, we'll have uh, okay. to come up. Yeah. 
and we'll come back if there's uh, any other questions. Thank you. Good evening. I, I'm Bill Kenny, the principal of William Kenny Associates in Fairfield. I'm a professional wetland scientist and soil scientist and landscape architect. I was asked recently to uh, take another look at, at this property and the proposed development. I actually have been on and off this property over the last 20 years a number of times. I helped with the I worked on the project, the, the permit that was issued in 2004. So I've been out, I've mapped the wetlands a couple different times over that time, uh, refreshed the mapping. Uh, most recently did that, I think about a year ago as part of the current proposal. Um, but so I, it's been interesting. I've been able to watch these wetlands over, over the years. Haven't been keeping a detailed review on them, but I am familiar with them. Uh, and you have the, the uh, two wetland areas you have on the north end of the property you have a classic red maple swamp uh, that's gently sloping from west to east and as you get further east there's more of a defined channel uh, down here in the this corner here where it enters a culvert water flow from the wetland enters into a culvert and that culvert discharges into this wetland here which is an emergent marsh um, and looking at some historic aerial photos, I look back at the 1934 photo, it looks like this might have been a farm pond back in the day. And it's interesting, it's uh, so wet that over the, the pond filled in over time with sediment and then eventually the sediment got so high that uh, uh, vegetation could take root and start to grow and now it's dominated by cattails. It's cattails are a primary vegetation out there, except on the edges where it's drier and you're getting other uh, wetland plants as well and a fair amount of uh, multiflora rose and some other invasive plants along the edges. But So that's pretty much wide open. It's interesting. Woody plants haven't been able to take root there and I think it's because it's just so wet that it just doesn't provide a good habitat for trees to grow at this point. The northern wetland uh, it shows signs of being an old pasture. Uh, there's old fence posts and barbed wire in some areas in the wetland. And also a discussion about invasives, there are, there's Japanese barberry, which is a pretty much a, a common invasive shrub in areas that have been previously pastured. So there's uh, pockets of uh, barberry and multiflora rose, invasive multiflora rose in, in the wetland. Um, with all of the earthwork activity, I, I was uh, interesting to be able to walk through the wetlands and take a look at them. And what I find is that they have been well protected during all this, uh, not seeing signs of uh, significant effects from the activities that are occurring right now. Uh, no, big sediment deposits or anything like that where there might have been a washout or something. Uh, so they, they, they seem to be doing well um, with the work that's occurring. And um, so that's an update of existing conditions and some information about past conditions. Uh, Rob asked that I talk a little bit about the proposed um, sidewalk it would affect, uh, I guess, a few hundred square feet, 250 square feet. So uh, this wetland, when I look at this wetland and think about the functions that it provides, uh, one being um, certainly it's a nice flat wetland, being an old pond again, it, it's, a, it's a basin, so it provides some flood storage of floodwaters. It also, by holding those water, that water, during summer events, it helps to clean that water, so it has good water quality function. Um, and then the density of the cattails is a great filter, so it's an even, you have a physical function where it holds the water and allows pollutants to settle out, but also the cattails have a good density of, of plant growth that 
is a filter to help remove pollutants. Um, but overall, that couple hundred square feet is a, a small percentage. You guys have the acreage of them, but it's probably less than 1% of that wet. Uh, so you'll lose some capacity for holding water, a very minor amount. Uh, there is, if we look, I, I think this wetland in particular, it's pretty, it would be very easy to expand this to mitigate, expand it in another portion to mitigate for that couple hundred feet of loss. Um, either adjacent to, <laughs> so the loss is due to the sidewalk, is that correct? Yes. yes. And there's something on one of the maps I've seen, it's, it, it shows, is that the, the drainage culvert? Yes, so that's, it's right at the, uh, where the water exits the wetland to go under the road. <coughs> so it's right, they have to extend the culvert to allow for the walk to go on top of the culvert. Okay, culvert pushing then into the- Into the bottom. Okay. To the, uh, roughly to the west. Whoops. I'm a Mac guy. <laughs> Where did my, oh, here it is here. I'm not trying to use my, uh, sorry about that. So it, yeah, it's, it's right here. The culvert is right here. So yeah. this wetland exit, the water from this wetland leaves the site right here. It goes under Route 25, Main Street. Um, but there, so there's a proposed stormwater basin right here. You could, there's areas adjacent to that where you could expand this wetland or you could expand it easy enough over here. Over here is not a good place because that's where it's sloping down now. Um, but it's much easier to do it in, in either uh, along Route 25. So you'd be replacing a very similar habitat. Um, so it's certainly okay. easy to replace. Uh, I was aware when I worked on the permit 20 years ago, I can't believe it's been 20 years. But <laughs> At that time, we talked about the new stormwater quality manual coming out, the 2004 manual, and uh, now they have a new manual coming out 20 years later. So, um, interesting. Uh, there was a permit from 97 that included proposal to control bases within the wetland itself. Uh, because there's some farm debris in here. There's an old farm truck broken up into six different parts or something. So um uh, expanding the invasive management plan to include perhaps controlling some of the shrubs the barberry and the multiflora rose and pulling out the, that old truck uh, uh would be a good another mitigated measure um, how about the wetland outside the property borders in, in this area yeah or, just to the to the right, I guess. Oh, here as well. It the the grades rise up here. The wetland follows pretty darn closely the property line through this area. Uh, so it doesn't the, the the grade rises up here to the north, and, and it's very interesting. Right right through here, there's a drainage divide where uh, the water starts to pitch to the west, and that's where it goes into water company land. But uh, right about here, the water pitches to the east, and beyond that, it pitches to the west. So this wetland wraps around here. Okay, that's good. It helps. Any questions? Any, any questions? No. Questions? I'm good. <clears throat> good. I think with uh, Amy and that, that's you know that sort of wraps up our prepared uh, remarks and uh, this presentation for this evening. If uh, certainly we're here for questions, um, you know we uh, I don't know if you, you're going to open up to the public comment at this point, but uh, I'll, I'll save my closing remarks for <laughs> for when you get when you get done with that. I guess. They can open it for public remarks. Yeah, I guess we'll open it up for any public comments or remarks, questions. Anybody in the gallery here? Doesn't look like it. Anybody remote for questions or comments?
Yes, sir. Okay. You back on I just, uh, I mean, I'd just like to thank everybody for their time. Um, and feel that we've had a project that's uh, reasonably sensitive to the on site resources. And, uh, you know, if, having hearing no more uh, questions or comments, we, we really request that you close the public hearing um, if you feel that you're able to. And that I just again say thank you very much for your time. Next. That's that's a good question, whether to close or not. We need a motion for that. Yes, we do. But I'm just wondering if we. Yeah, I, I just think you need a consensus. I just I look at the empty chairs and. I'm okay and, with closing, and I think that we can we can have conditions with anything that's left as far as. Um, wetlands and and uh removing the invasives or, or whatever else we feel need yeah there were there were a couple of things there were the signage and the, the invasives right i'm going to make a list and i'm going to share it with them tomorrow of all the comments and changes that need to be made for the plans and i will share that with solely yeah. yeah so i would think we can close a public hearing and then instruct staff to to draft a, a motion of approval and uh yeah. i don't see that there's going to be enough changing here that we would need to continue it right. no, I, agree. I agree a call for a motion yeah uh, do we have a motion <laughs> to close this um, i'll make a motion to close the public here second all right motion's passed do we have, do we have to vote on it or oh, yeah. Can we? yeah uh motion second and then roll call okay, okay. We vote. all in favor all in favor aye, aye. Unanimous. We can vote with. Yeah. Well, well, you're you you're closing the hearing, right. and as part of the consensus, you're directing staff to write a favorable resolution for the case. Okay. Correct. Very good. Okay. We can get uh, Mr. Tomorrow back in. Mm -hmm. Not there. It's <laughs> <laughs> only been an hour. <coughs> Cheryl, you have comments. I do. Yeah. I do. That's pretty straightforward. I'm going to get some more paper to carry on because I don't have enough. Yeah. Like this part. Thank you. He needs to sleep out there, wake him up. Yep, kick him in the chair. Give him a little shake. This was an extra set where I could pick mine up the other day. Sure. Yeah. Put him out for me. So. Oh. You done? I'll go through a couple of technical things for oh come on that's not fun procedural okay so you did see which is the deliberation you know actually took the motion to close right okay so i got that down so for c favorable consensus mm -hmm. and now we're up to d so i should wait for keith to come back for yeah and there's yeah. the chairman <laughs> Wake. So, uh, as far as enforcement goes, uh, 381 Barnhill, um, we talked about this at the last meeting, I presented it to you. I mean, enforcement reports that they have a notice of violation on the site. And um, the only reason it's on the agenda right now is because it's still outstanding. And I was just giving the applicant or the owner and his attorney any chance to come and speak tonight and they didn't come. So that's why it's on the agenda, but no, but nothing's happened since then. We've just been kind of emailing back and forth and no movement as far as um, resolution. What was the, can you just give me a quick recap on what it was? I'm sure. Is that the time they had the barn built? We were here last time, the lady? 
Mm, no. Um, so the, the no, no uh, that was a, that was an, a permit that you had uh, given and they didn't follow the plan. So they have to modify it. And um, actually that property uh, Mary has been working on um, and, and the, the, the surveyor was out there and has redone the contour line. So you'll be seeing that. I think I think at the next meeting, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> so there was a disturbance of the wetlands um, in March of 2020. And Denise Hall said sent a letter to the owner dated uh, March 30th of 2020, asking him to obtain permits from the Wetlands Commission. And it seems that no permit was ever obtained. In December of 2022, um, staff was notified by aquarium there was erosion coming off the property. Um, so the patch basin and inspection on December 29th showed that wetland area on Barnhill Road was filled in with a tall berm um, between 2020 and 2022 at some point. Um, and we have photographic evidence um, that Denise took. A uh, notice of violation was issued on January 6th, and then a meeting was held in uh, the office with the owner and staff on the 17th. Um, and he is now looking to obtain permits to construct a three-car garage off the rear of his house. Um, and then questions were raised about the wetlands area, and he was going to submit a soil report. And it, apparently it was done, and I had, I had also sent an email um, as per the commission's request to do a deep deep hole testing. So that was, that was related to the uh, owner. Oh, that's right. Hopefully that's being done. Oh, but, um, no, I remember. Right. Really clear cut everything. Okay. Right. Right. So um, I'm yeah. still waiting to actually get some kind of, besides email something in writing from him or his attorney in writing that shows any kind of progress else back and forth. So it's on the agenda, just in case they were going to be here through Zoom or in person. And it doesn't seem that they're here. So. And that's and it Mr. For that. Chairman, it's important, uh, as Cheryl alluded, that we put it on each agenda. Staff has already been talking to the town attorney. And the, it's important to put this on every agenda and afford an opportunity for the property owner to come before the commission yep. because it helps the town's case down the road. Do we want to do the same thing with 1380 Monroe Turnpike? Well, at the last commission meeting, you, uh, the commission had asked that it go on to the 22nd. Okay. to give the, so. um, the attorney time to kind of work through the minutia of it, and you wanted to see it on the next agenda. Wait, so that's, not, that's why it's on this one particularly. 22nd of March. We're having a meeting on the 22nd of March just for that? No, no, no. It's, no we're, I think we're having, an agenda, we're having a meeting for, you know, to decide on 127 Main and all, whatever else is going on the agenda. But that's coming back onto the agenda under... Um, under the, ag the agent report. Yeah, the because decision was just to delay to what's meant. not at this meeting. Right, right. there is going to be a meeting on the 22nd. Yeah, but the, the, that meeting, the way I understand it, and I think the way we all talked about it last year was that if we are running out of time in the regular meetings, and these meetings are not really full. So these are for the convenience of the applicant to only have to wait two weeks. They were there for like, so we don't have to run until 11 o'clock at night if, you know, if we're not getting it done in a reasonable amount of time, right? Right, so staff will be talking to the chairman because 417 Main Street may not be ready in two weeks. So if that is off, <coughs> right, we have more- The second meeting of the month- And the supposed to be for- A continue, like if we have like a big, a lot of like we can't get through an application in an evening because there's so much stuff or there's a bunch of people or whatever it's not it's not to give it's not to give more opportunities for the applicants to get in front of us it's so that we don't have to be here till 11 o'clock at night because we could say we're going to continue this in two weeks because we didn't finish business on the current agenda kind of well, mr chairman 417 main street will be a big one in and of by itself Right. If they're ready in two weeks. So if you're saying if they're not ready in two weeks, we then wouldn't gonna necessarily. Ask, staff's going to ask the chairman, do you want to have the meeting? But, you know. Well, let's, let's do that. Let's talk about this. At the end. Let's, go through, like let's go through the rest of the agenda and let's discuss this at the end. Sure. Okay. Um, Could I so, make one comment yeah, about the item that's going to be on the agenda next time? Mm -hmm. And that I found this information. I put one on everybody's place. As we get into more of these farming and forestry issues, 
this is a pretty good breakdown through here of what per, where permits are required, what's as of right. So I just provided it to each of the commissioners for your reading pleasure. That's great. Uh, I drive by that site on my own turnpike every day and I see them cutting down more trees and clear cutting around the pond he created. And uh, there's there, to me, there's relevant information that is educational and easily understood. Thank you for that. Okay, so we are now. So, Bond, so we're just, you just mentioned that Barn Hill is, there hasn't been any activity yet. Not, not, not beyond emails from him, but beyond that, nothing, no, you know, no, no submittals of any plans. So, are we ready to move to general discussion? The bond release. Uh, unless you want to do the minutes. The minutes. Did you have uh, six of them? Okay. Um, I'll do the minutes. And I have to be collecting them from the beginning. I've gone through all the minutes. Um, I can submit, I mean, for the August 24th. Do we need to do each one individually? Well, it's your call. Usually, if you have issues with one, then you want to do them. Start with the old one. So, uh, so August 24th, 2022. Yep. Mission Hall, all of you. The, the only issue I had, and it, it carries over to most of them, uh, the add, add page numbers, very minor thing. Uh, and then there was one typo, but I can provide this copy and Typo is irrelevant to the content. So I'd say yeah, that, that's good. Reviewing yeah. it, the content is good. So I get a motion to accept the minutes for August 24, 2022. Motion to accept the minutes. Second. Uh, motion from Commissioner Lindstrom, second by Commissioner Hall. Uh, Hall. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay, these minutes on for August 24, 2022 pass unanimously. <clears throat> September 14, 2022. Hall. I have reviewed that and there's one error on page four, which I marked, which can be adjusted. It showed a vote of seven to zero to zero with Chairman Romano recused. So the math is incorrect there. They can fix that easily by reviewing the record. It's gotta be six then. Right, so okay. minor. All right, so, so, um, so with, I motion to accept the minutes with the, uh, one change. Motion to accept the minutes. Motion from Commissioner Lindstrom. Second. Second from Section Hall. Yeah. All favor? Aye. Minutes for uh, September 14th, uh, 2022 are accepted. Uh, minutes for October 26th, 2022. I have reviewed and they are okay. <laughs> I have a motion to accept the minutes yeah. for <laughs> motion to accept yeah. the minutes from no errors. Commissioner Lynchum, second. Second. Second, Commissioner oh. Stewart. All in favor? Yep. Aye. All right. Minutes for um, October 26, 2022 are accepted unanimously. Uh, minutes for November 9, 2022. I have reviewed and they are exceptional. Excellent. <laughs> a motion to accept the minutes for November 9, 2022. Okay. Yeah. Motion by Commissioner Lindstrom. Second. Hey. Second, Commissioner Second. Hall. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion um, I minutes for November 9, 2022 are accepting. Yeah, I think we could just, oh, I guess we don't need to do that. All right. Sure. Well, yeah, something. <laughs> you can just, yeah. you something? I just, in general, if we could have the page numbers on there for reference. Um, minutes for November 22nd, 2022. I have reviewed, this was the special meeting, the meeting which was over in seven minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so there wasn't much there, but it's correct. Okay, good. Motion to accept the minutes for November 22nd, 2022. Motion to accept. Motion from Commissioner second. Lindstrom, second from Commissioner Stewart. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, minutes for November 22nd, 2022, accepted unanimously. Minutes for February 22nd, 2023. Again, I have reviewed and they're correct. 
Excellent. Motion to accept the minutes for February 22nd, 2022. Motion to accept. Motion from Commissioner Lindstrom. Second. Second. Second from Commissioner Hall. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Minutes for February 22nd, 2023. Uh, accepted unanimously. Thank you. All right. Regulation Amendment Committee, which we have formed the. No update. Yeah, right. Okay. And did we. We have no update. No update, but did we have to put. Is that the one we had to select the. We, we have to select a number of members members to be on that committee. Correct. Okay. At this point, okay. it's Cheryl and I, I think, and we get to- Yeah, that's a work in progress. Work in progress. Do we have- uh, Does that have to be commissioners or could it be anyway? I'm like two of the Good question. No, it's gotta be uh, members. Members, so okay. obviously we could probably work on that when we got a full house. Do we have, yeah. do we have a, Resign from Commissioner Gingrich now? No. Nothing's been officially uh, submitted. So then it wouldn't be replaced until that's done, right? Correct. Okay. All right. So now public outreach committee. Um, well, actually, I know we don't really have a committee, but I just was um, talking to Vita Stone about this bicentennial thing. Um, you know, I don't know, they're doing floats and everything. I don't know if we want to get involved. You know, it could be like, there could be something to do, like, I don't know, like. Dress up as trees and. Great tree, yeah. Like, you know, we could get the skunk cabbage savior shirts made and we'll walk in the parade. In the parade. The uh, conservation commission's going to do something. Are they? Yeah. Well, maybe, you know, if they need help, I mean, I'll uh, extend you know, maybe, you know, we could yeah. combine, you know. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Just, think, just thinking about it, you know, like we are, we are an entity in the town. Yeah. You know, even though we're small and. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. All right. So that's all I have to say about that. You can use your truck. You, if you got something we can pull behind for a float flatbed. Float, you know what? I, I, let me tell you something. I, I know you guys ever heard of uh, Silver Steel? Silver Steel was a is a steel drum band, and they were doing a bunch of parades, and uh, they did this big one. And we did one, I think, at Stanford one time. We did one in a couple in Fairfield. We've done a new town, and I basically took my. I don't have the trailer anymore, but I had this huge equipment trailer, and they custom built a stage over the trailer so that they occupied every last square foot because there was ramps and everything and they built like a raised part over the ramps and they put the drum set up there and they had like we had generators going pa system speakers the whole thing it was freaking amazing and the cool thing about it was that we had a we had a length limit right now if i had this big air brake trailer towing behind an air brake truck we would have never we would have been too long so when i went I manu when I got there, or before I one time I had to take my truck to drive it to the place. I got underneath it with a wrench and I manually released the brakes and I towed it with a much smaller truck that you normally wouldn't be able to move it, but I was able to stay one foot below the length limit. So we had this wild huge stage behind this small little truck. I got more, I'll tell you that's all I want to say about it. <laughs> I don't have the trailer anymore, I don't have okay. the stage anymore. It's in Monroe somewhere, the stage though. But um all right, so uh, let's um, acknowledge, let's make acknowledgement of, I guess this means you, BJ, right? Yes. Uh, acknowledgement of fulfilling the G SGS 2020A-42D online training program. Thank you for doing Complete. that. And we'll do the bond releases. Yep, I'm ready, Mr. Chairman, when you are. Go ahead. Okay, we have the bond for IWC 2021-07, that's Sioux High Ridge Drive for the construction of a single family dwelling in the amount of 11,000. This was a solo bond for the Inland Wetlands Commission. And I uh, inspected the property today. The homeowner still needs to put the uh, uh, C down. But uh, if the commission feels comfortable, I'm recommending approval subject to staff monitoring the installation of the uh, seed uh, and the germination 
Well, it's your call if you want to uh, hold off on that. Do they have a slide? Hi, we're, we're, this is a so? yeah. This is a 2021 application. Yes. I Did you just recently completed construction. Just completed the house, yeah. So they couldn't see in the winter. Right. Planning season starts May 15th, so yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember that one. I don't know why. It's right at the end of the cul-de-sac. If you haven't been down there in a while. High Ridge Drive is uh, off of. Um, uh, Taking a High Rock. High Ridge is. No, High Ridge 111. Uh, it's uh, what's that side street? Yeah. Crossroad. Crossroad. Cross, going towards Shelton, mm -hmm. and then it's, uh, uh, well, it's about a mile and a half long. So, so you're recommending that we we approve it? You're taking the action subject okay. to staff with the seed germinating. Okay, uh, make a motion to release the bond um, subject to the staff's approval of the final condition of the site, including the germination of the seed. A motion second from, from Commissioner Stewart, a second from Commissioner Hall. Before we vote, let me just want to clarify something. Does this mean this is we're 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 releasing the bond, but we're 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 doing the motion to re in here, but we're exercising in here, but they're not going to actually get the money until after it germinates. Absolutely, yes. We have a two acre. I mean, yeah, two acre, two inch, two inch height. It's right. Grass has to why, why are we acting on now and not? In two months, when the actually get the homeowner asked that it be taken up at this particular meeting, he wanted to see if the commission was uh, going to act favorable or not. Like I said, I called him tonight, and I said that's the, uh, that's that's the call of the commission. I just want to understand. So, so he still doesn't get released to him. We're we're releasing. Don't take it we're, to staff. We're, yes. Okay. We're taking it. Give it to staff. It's so it passes through us. We're okay with these conditions, but he still has to meet this part of it before he gets the actual money. Mm -hmm. But he knows that we're not going to hold it up for any other reason. Right. Okay. And I staff, think, we'll give. I'll make sure we all understood mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So we have a motion. All in favor. All right. Uh, all right. Bon, uh, motion to pass uh, uh, to release. The, sorry, motion to pass the to release the bond for two high risk drive has been approved unanimously with that condition. The condition, yeah. Um, and then what about this other one? I twenty nineteen twenty two. Okay, this is twelve Glen Hollow Drive. This was for the construction of an in ground pool, and staff inspected it today. Everything has been completed satisfactory. Beautiful job. Uh, mm. uh, actually, just gorgeous uh, grounds. It was in the Upland area. Mm. Staff recommends approval. This was only for $1,000. And the reason why the delay, this is 2019, the pool company, Prospect Pool Co Company out of Prospect, Connecticut, they've been so busy during COVID, and now they just totally forgot about it. <laughs> wasn't that, wasn't that bond um, placed uh, through staff? Uh, this yeah, but still subject to uh, to our approval to yeah. release. Yeah, because I don't remember this one. Yeah, this is an old one. Why so old? They forgot about it, and they're just catching up. Motion to approve the release of the bond. We have a motion from Commissioner Stewart to release the bond in a second. Second. Second from Commissioner Lindstrom. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. The bond for. IAA-2019-22 Twin Glen Hollow Drive has been uh, approved to be released uh, unanimously. Okay, now before adjournment, we were going to talk about the meeting schedule and this. So, like we have an hour and a half meeting tonight, right? So, we obviously are not full that we're staying really late. So I, I'm i okay with everybody else making a chiming in on this March 22nd, but I thought we all kind of felt good about having one meeting a month unless we're jammed, meaning like we can't get it done in one meeting a month. I guess I look at it just a little bit differently and that if there is no pressing business, we would not have a second meeting. If there is a, a key 
uh, hearing that we've got that we could close, like 417 Main, we would hold. 417 is a continuation. It's a continuation. So why, I don't know. I mean, let's just look at that one individually. So that was a continuation. <coughs> that was not, that's not pressing, right? Or is it because they have a time? We've had, that, one, we've had a couple. They all have time constraints. Yeah. They all statute. have time constraints yeah. for statute. Well, but the, before 17, wait, was that, was that? Fancies. Oh, that's fat. I'm sorry. I got that totally confused with the new gas station. That's a big one. That they're bringing back. We that's a big application. That'll be an hour plus. Of the one for the gas station. No, I'm talking about the so Vazes. Vazes 417. Oh, with the new you right. See the gas station, right? Right. The gas station's back. I don't remember that. We but the gas station's P and Z. We're not. We already approved that one, didn't yeah, we? That was 2022, right? Right. Oh, I, I just they, my brain. They then went to the Planning and Zoning Commission. P and Z said. You got to uh, widen the road. They said, well, you can't do that. Okay, so I got, I got completely okay. just, I got lost for a second. So I would just the letter says, everybody granting the commission the extension of time. They're not asking for the next meeting. They're at, here we granting the commission. Yeah, we might find out. Grant them extensions. This is New York. Here we grant the commission an extension of time limit. We're granting some extensions. Yeah, they're giving it to you, and you're accepting. Okay. So, so this one you're saying is going to take some time. What else do we know is happening in the next meeting? The what happened with one. What will happen with one twenty seven? The resolution on one twenty seven. Which is just a deliberation, or is there still no, adding more stuff? Finished the deliberation. Close tonight, right? So not deliberating tonight. It's already been deliberated. Yeah. Oh, you did that. Yes. Yeah. We're directing staff to write a favorable resolution. Okay, okay, so that's done. So there's no more on that. There's one thing that's been coming up the next meeting since at the last commission meeting for 1380 Monroe Turnpike. The commission asked that I put it on that agenda, and they asked that I issue a cease and desist to to help the the, the owner. Or the person that's living there would stop, like you know. Who asked for this? The 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 commission asked staff to, you know, uh, move forward with a cease and desist on the property for the property owner to stop the continued um, clearing clearing on the property. That was from the last meeting we said that. Correct, and and asked that it go on the agenda for the twenty second. That's when that's when you guys wanted to see it again. So it's not on this agenda. And with that, when you issue a cease and desist, it should be done within 10 days of the meeting so that they can appear at the meeting. So there's a letter that's drafted I have ready to go out tomorrow for the 27th with, with the 10 business days for that time so that for that time period. Gotcha. If you don't have the meeting, I could send the letter out and, and reschedule it for the 10 days for the next meeting. I could do that, but because uh, right. the letter hasn't gone out yet, but that is in the works. It can be done. So those are two things that are carrying over that we know for, so for right now, if we were having the meeting on the 22nd, well, that's one thing I remember too. It was no new business. The second meeting was not opening new business. So that is, does fall under because neither one of these is new business, right? Yeah, now none of this was ever written down. No, yeah, it I wasn't, but we, we had, we should make sure we're all clear on the interpretation. I think that's part of what's happening. Yeah, that's part of what we're talking about now. So we all understand. No one's really new. I thought a regular meeting was going to be the second one, and the first one was going to be the extra one. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how, do you, how do you go back in time when you, you do don't? That? I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying, if you're going to if you're going to cancel, if you're going to cancel <laughs> one of the days, well, we had we had this meeting. This looks like that one and the other one. You know, but I do remember it wasn't it wasn't to open up new applications. It was for continuations, yeah. as where this is, mm -hmm. my and or if we ran out of time to. So I say yes. I would agree that these two items would fall into continuation. Um, so I, I have less of a problem with it now. But what is happening? Do we know anything about what's happening April 12th? Do we know? I mean, it's a whole month away, but is there? Yeah, nothing has been submitted or in the works that we're aware of. But that could change, you know, of course. Yeah. Just the whole idea is to avoid, you know. 
Yeah, but two we have to have a meeting that we we hold every month. Yeah, and then and then pick right. one of the two that maybe not be held, so that the so that the engineers know that they have to be prepared for the, at least that one. The, I, the well, one the part talking. of what happened last year, just before Cheryl came on board, was that we had spoke about there was supposed to be a communication to all the common engineers that we see about these cha about this change. I don't know if that happened. That was a staff thing. So I don't know if that ever happened, right? It probably did. But I, I don't recall anything ever being. You remember that discussion, right? Right. That they were going to let them know, say, hey, you know, if you want to open up an application, right. it's the first meeting of the month, right? So if you want your hearing determination, you want to open it, it's, and the second one is for, if we run late, if it's like 1030 and we're not through the agenda, we would say, all right, we're gonna continue this meeting on the second meeting of the month. That's already in the regulations. It is. Yeah. The, okay. The, the time and, limit. And the other one is the, um, the other reason was, um, just continue. Sorry. Yeah, continue. Uh, yeah. I guess. So, I'm, I'm limit. Finish unfinished business. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, something that's already open. Right. I would suggest well, that we write something down that we all agree to that can be sent out. Right. We review it. Yeah, after. Staff will talk to the chairman. Yeah. We'll, we'll get that policy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know we had it. We had it. We had ironed this all out at one point. We we're having the same exact discussion. Do you remember like when, when it was changed. roughly? Because I can go back on, to watch the videos on YouTube of the of the meeting. If you kind of remember it roughly when it was. Same conversation. What? <laughs> it was the same. Okay. It was no more specific. I, I know, but like you know, I'm that still struggling with yeah. my memory on it. Um, it was like it was. Donald was still here, so that's probably a good starting point. Back. Yeah, but right. 2022, early 2022, probably. I think it was when we were deciding on the meeting schedule for 2022. That's right. We just came out of COVID 2021. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I don't remember this conversation, so it was just before me then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we talked about the set two. We're going to keep it. <laughs> We we're talking about going down to just one meeting a month and we said well let's keep the second one just in case we run into some things that like are running really really late we don't want to stay late we don't want to you know to be fair to all of us because we're all volunteers and so everything else. This, and then the other one was um i guess it was a continuation of matter and then there was two reasons yeah the, the thing is it is very clear in the bylaws that we have two meetings so right we write this up this new plan and we Put it in the regulation committee and we and put it in the bylaws so it's, it's clear it's a second meeting is determinable but let's do you want the second meeting as right. the, the floater me or the right now if something is happens okay with you guys i mean yeah. I don't, and then the other thing the other reason why we have it too is let's say we can't get a quorum on the first meeting of the month like so many people are gone right we could you we have the other one as an option yeah right so let's let's have the meet the march 22nd meeting all right, let's have it because I think there's people that are already intending on it already. We don't want to screw them up. Um, so it's deliberation on 127, and it's so and it's the continuation of, of 417. 417. Nothing else. Nothing else is going to come on. That is correct. I'll just mention enforcement things from the staff level, but it'll I'll keep it quick. So, right. Yeah. Right, an update, but that'll all, that's all that's on it. No one is, no other applications are coming in or anything at that time. So it should be a very quick, uh, you know, meeting. I, I do have to remind everyone because it just came into my thought process. The judge is going to be rendering his memorandum of decision sixty four, and it's heading down for a resubmission to wetlands and zoning. So that's going to be in the future. And you definitely want to have a separate meeting for that, like you did last time. Yeah, right. You have to. Remember, for the members that were here, <laughs> yes. you tried to do it both, and it just didn't work. And then you said, we. That's going to be a little tricky. Yes. Yeah. Because I think I have to recuse myself on that one. Better get her briefed. Awesome. Well, better get Eric go up to speed. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I might go talk to the. I might bring it in front of the ethics board and ask them what they think. Also, NSAFE contacted me today. They're going to have their most updated 
uh, report. They will probably do zoning next and then inland wetlands, you know, as part of the, uh, the reporting. Um, that, yeah. that, that, when that judgment comes down, that means that they're done over there? No. Like, meaning, no, meaning like that permit, the previous permit is null and void? Our approval is yeah, null they're and void, right? Null and void, and they're direct, they're remanding the property owner to go back before the Inland Wetlands Commission and do a separate standalone. And what was the, what was the uh, reason? Filling and grading permit was needed. Remember? You did the remediation. Okay. We had this discussion in the beginning. About, hey, if that body of water is not regulated, it's just the result of yeah. main water and the groundwater coming up. And it was determined it was another application was not needed. Planning and zoning would do the filling and grading. Everyone was in agreement. Our remediation and the intervener challenged it. Right. And the remediation and, and plan. And the judge said it's a wetlands that needs. So the, we had this, we, this you needed thing. both remediation well, and the filling and grading right this so there was there was there was discussion on this in the very beginning and the all the attorneys or barbara i believe consulted i talked to finn and talked to green i don't think green mattered for that mm -hmm. but there was a discussion about which way to proceed with this and they i think Vin Marino might have been on it a little bit. They had brought up some, I believe they brought up some case law or something, and we went with their recommendation, which was that the remediation plan, I believe this is, please correct me if I'm wrong or I'm confused. The remediation plan was, because the remediation required material to be brought in, the filling of the hole bring or the material being moved or brought in whatever the case may be is part of this remediation plan so it's almost like well, not double jet maybe double jeopardy in a way like why if the plan already required in order to execute the plan you're filling and grading why are you getting a filling and grading plan and the judge didn't agree with that assessment so basically they would have been here under two applications for the same exact mm -hmm. mechanical work uh, two different applications would have had it been heard, which means we had to listen to that whole bullshit twice. Right? Well, I suspect we're going to get quite a different application, right, from him, since his intended use of the property may have changed. Well, he has, so he has, um, I mean, we're speaking about historical, so I'm not worried about it. He had a plant, so they've gotten to pretty close to, they're pretty close to where they need to be for the one side. That's right. The other, where they're, so really like, nothing's gonna reverse what they did. I what they did so. was good. There's no, there's no, we're not gonna be able to, we're not gonna say, well, we shouldn't, you know, now you have to do it again. No, I mean, it's gonna be, okay, they're within 10 feet on the one big piece and there's still maybe something on the, on four, I think it was four independence or something, right? Mm -hmm. So they're, they got a quick bit to go because that was the area where they were going to replace the watershed that was taken along the whole length and build it back up in one corner. So they had a square area here to develop and a rectangle over here instead of making a long, narrow strip, which is harder to redevelop. And they will modify that. Yeah, they're going to come in with yeah. some kind of change, you know, markets of change, whatever the case may be. So, yeah, it has to be... I believe has to come in, but it's not nearly as complicated as last time no, because they're above the water table. You know, the whole the whole environmental part of it is kind of now that the entire high school or whatever that all the concrete and everything there has been processed. Yeah, it's all according to the the plan and the regulations and whatever their constrictions were. It's all been done. The only thing to be brought in at this point as far as I could tell, is just clean material. Nothing is going to be in question. So they went through all that hard part of it. So it should be pretty straightforward. You know, I would hope so, unless he's asking for something different. So this is this opportunity. Well, it's a whole new application. It's a, so right. again, everything that happened before that, when the judge makes the, when the judge makes his 
his order. Yeah. It's almost like everything that happened beforehand no longer exists. Like it's not, it's as yeah, if start, we're starting from day one becomes the day they reapply. Yes. Everything else is just they're going to incorporate data. the work that's been. If the guy right. bought it at the condition, it's like he walked on it in the condition it is now. Right. Everything that happened beforehand, because it's been documented to be have done according to the previous plan, mm -hmm. but we're not going to look back historically. I don't think you guys are going to look back historically. And you're just going to be, you know, here's a new application. The judge, you know, made the other, everything else disappear. So there's no, everything that happened pre, like all the plans and the grades and all that stuff, technically they have to resubmit all that, but at the level they are now. Mm -hmm. Right. So where they are now is now considered the existing condition is the way I, the way I understand it, the way I would understand it. So, well, if we right. read the judge's ruling, we probably won't understand it any better. It yeah, we don't really have leaves. to know what the judge's ruling is because the town knows what it is. We know Again. all we need to do is review the application as it comes to us. Right. It's just but if it is coming, that will take some time, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So where are we? We talked about, so we're going to have this March 22nd meeting. And then at that meeting, if, if, if we, if again, it's, it'd be nicer if we had more, you know, a fuller house, but what we'll do is we we'll should talk about that too. That notification of, of not attending, uh, there should right. be, you know, the, the assumption should be there's a meeting. But well, we all have, we all have this. I, but I would love, and I don't know whether the staff uses Outlook. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you guys could could send out invitations to all these meetings, sure. To all the commissioners, I don't know you if you guys need to put them on the calendar. And we'll accept them. And if, if there's something that comes up that I can't make it, I'll exactly. just deny yeah. it. And if and you can even put um, if there's materials you want to give to us, scan and you can just put them right on that on that invitation, because I don't think about it. And I'm with this That's maybe funny. meeting, no meeting, kind of meeting. If I don't get an email and a thing, I'm, I'm just hoping well, we were that saying we before, cancel the meeting. We were saying before you showed up that the packet's like a mental trigger. We well, see it, it, is. it is, or an email, yeah. or an email. Is right, an email, trigger. but even the, yeah, that's the, the, if you send if you set up some meeting invites, then I'll I'm looking at my calendar yeah, sure. 18 yeah. times a yeah. day, yeah. Right. so I'll see that. Oh well. Yeah, but the the physical packet definitely helps because you know oh, it just shows up on your doorstep. You bring it inside. It's you know it's like okay, this is only a couple it's days. So now. depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, all right. So okay. hey, hey, Keith. It's like getting something from Amazon, like, oh, God yeah. damn. Can you guys put it in a brown box right. and put an Amazon put tape smile, on it? Put a smile. So maybe I'll go, whoo, Amazon. A big red bow, is that what you want? <laughs> now, staff has to contact Ryan because he needs to vote for 127 uh, Main Street. So he's got to stay down the right of the video. He's really right himself. Oh, yeah, so watch the video he made there. And, and, yeah. Okay, so I'll contact him and get him uh, up to speed where he needs to be. And he's got to state it before he votes. Oh, it's in the little no, consensus. We just did a consensus. Okay. Are we at number six yet? Um, where the fuck's up? So, uh, oh, uh, so, uh, yes, he's looking for a motion. Adjournment. Can I make a motion for the means? Go ahead. Motion to adjourn. That's so right. Commissioner Lindstrom to yeah. close yes. the meeting. I second by Commissioner All. In favor? Yo. All in favor. All right. A mo uh, motion to close the meeting at 9.01 p.m. Accepted unanimously. Good night, everyone.